get out there and you got that V12 engine sound and it handles really nicely. It's very responsive. It's just a kick in the rear. And nowadays when you drive one of these on the road, people will change three lanes to come over and get a better look. I always get the big thumbs up from people, especially now because it's becoming more and more rare to see. People aren't driving it, they're putting them in garages now. I'd driven a new Huracan, and oh, what a car. I mean, that thing just, it's a rocket. And you just pump both paddles, and it just goes and nails you in the back. This little guy doesn't do that. You have to deliberately make shifts. It's a five speed, you got a clutch in there to worry about. Sometimes the synchronizers wear out, so you have to double shift. It's an older vintage car, but it's still a lot of fun. Jack Riddell, and I've got a 1967 400 GT 2 Plus 2 right here behind me. The well, Lamborghini started with the 350 GT. That was the model that they built and uh, used a borrowed ZF gearbox and the Salisbury rear end. But then they decided that Lamborghini wanted to make their own powertrain components, so the 4 liter came along. They made a larger engine, three and a half, went to 4 liters, and the transmission and the rear end are all Lamborghini now, including the engine. So the whole powertrain on this car is the first Carl Lamborghini. It's considered a grand touring car. That's what Ferruccio wanted it to be. And it's the successor for the 350, which is a three and a half liter version. This, of course, has the four liter version engine. It's made for long distance grand touring driving, and it's high speed, very comfortable. Creature comforts, you've got a little tiny back seat there, and I guess if you have small kids, you could probably stuff them back there. But that's about the only plus two that you're gonna be able to do. We've had adults back there, but they sit sideways and it's not very comfortable. And it's got a plenty of room for luggage. You can cruise at 140 miles an hour all day if you could do it legally, but you can't, unfortunately. This engine has the four liter V12. It has four overhead cams and six side drive Weber carburetors. Puts out about 360 horsepower to about 6,000 RPM. I've been looking for this particular car for many years because I fell in love with it, but I couldn't afford the ones I was looking at or they were pretty much beat up. And then I got really lucky one day and I found a little tiny newsletter, local Seal Beach newsletter, and it had one of these in there for sale. The guy wanted $7,500 for the car. That was beyond my means. $7,500 in 1972 for a Navy Chief Warrant Officer was a lot of money. So basically I went over there and looked at it and we got to going back and forth and he's just getting married. He had a company car. He didn't need this anymore. Make a long story short, he let me have it for 6,250 bucks. It had just under 23,000 miles on it, and I put 268,000 plus on it, so I've driven it quite a bit. Luckily, my wife puts up with my craziness. <laughs> There were 247, I think, or 249 of the cars made. It depends on what you read. And this is number 1033, which is right about the middle of the production line. The thing that's different about my car, probably the fact that I've made a few modifications in the engine compartment. The original car has two distributors with breaker points. And that means whenever you set the timing, you have to set two timing marks. I modified a Jaguar distributor. I got it to fit on here, and I put an MSD system in there for ignition. And I don't have to do tune-ups, and it makes it much more drivable, which is good, because I like to drive it. They sold the 400 GT all the way through 1968. They had two production lines running at that time. The Miro was also being built at that period. One time in Monterey years ago, we had five of these lined up on the grass, and we all went one car to the next, and we found something different in every one of those cars. There were no two cars alike. They all had some differences. Production line was really weird back then. I mean, they had wine for lunch. They brought their own bottle of wine with them. I've been in the factory back in those days. It was all Italian, 100%, man. You never know. Hopefully you got a car that was built when everybody before lunch, you know? <laughs> I've been driving this car ever since they started the Concorso Italiano and the big events for the Monterey weekend. I've been driving this car up there. So this year will be my 34th year, 1,000 mile round trip times 34, just for Monterey. 
I think when you drive these cars, they actually behave better. The engine keeps clean, spark plugs don't get fouled up. It seems like the car just enjoys getting out on the road. I mean, if it had a personality, it would be telling me that. The social life that I've gotten by virtue of this car is amazing. I met really great people and I had super good times. It's like an extended family at this point, especially some of the folks who go back 30 plus years, you know, and it's just like having a cousin <laughs> or, a, you know, a brother or sister. It's like that. Yeah, I plan to keep on driving as long as I can, as long as the insurance company don't get on my case about it, you know. <laughs>